Hi, I'm Mr. V, and today's lesson from Illustrative Mathematics in Geometry is regarding solid geometry, or Unit 5, and it's called Speaking of Scaling. And by the end of the lesson, the goal is for you to be able to say, I can calculate scale factors for length, surface area, and volumes if I'm given any one of the three factors, either the surface areas, the lengths, or the volumes. And this was our initial problem. You're given an image or a picture of a cone that has a base of 36 pi square centimeters. That's the orange. The cone has been dilated using the top vertex as the center or the point of dilation. The area of the dilated cone space is 729 pi centimeters squared or square centimeters. What is the scale factor that is used? To solve this problem, you're going to use one of three formulas. The formulas that we've been dealing with with scaling are you have the length that you're starting with. If you scale it by a factor of k, it goes to the length that you are dilated to. If we dilate an area, it's going to be by the scale factor squared to get to the new area. Why is that? Well, I'll show you in just a moment. The volume is going to be dilated by a scale factor of k cubed to get to the new volume. Now, why is it that it's k squared? Maybe you remember if we had a rectangle and it has a length and it has a width, when we scale it up, we're scaling up the length by a factor of k. We're scaling up the width by a factor of k. Well, this original area is length times width. This area is the length times k times the width times k, which is length times width times k times k, or k squared. And the length times width is my original area times k squared. It's got a length component and a width component that are both being scaled by k. So this is k squared. So here we have an area, and we were told that it is an area. It's got centimeters squared. It's an area. So we can write our formula. The area that we're going to, which is this one, is equal to our area that we started with, this one, times k squared. Now when I substitute the values, 729 pi times is equal to k squared times 36 pi. Pi is a number. We'll just leave it like, like an x. Treat it like you would an x. Well, some people forgot about this k squared. They just said 729 divided by 36, and they got an answer. And that would not be the answer that we're looking for. When we divide both sides by 36 pi to get the k by itself, and I'm going to have k squared to begin with because I've got the formula here. When I do this division, the pi's cancel. There's no pi left in my answer. I have pi divided by pi, which is 1. So I have k squared is equal to 20.25. Now, it's k squared. It's not just k. That's because of the formula. So if you wrote this as your answer, the scale factor, this would be incorrect. The inverse operation of scaling is not dividing by 2. The inverse of multiplying is dividing. The inverse of squaring is square rooting. We take the square root of 20.25, you get 4.5. And there are no units. This is a scale factor. These have units. This is not centimeters or anything like that. Now, in our, um, in our problem for today, we're doing an info gap. And I, it has a dialogue. And I'm, I'm going to make this dialogue smaller so we can have more room, more real estate on the page to, to deal with. But you can look it over. And this is the problem. And here's the rectangle. The rectangle has length and width and height. It has a length 1, a width 1, and a height 1. In our, in our original drawing, let me see if I can find it here. In this, if I were to draw a rectangle, a rectangular prism would look like this. It's got three dimensions. And it's got a length 1, a width 1, or a height 1. That's a height and it's got a width one. And if it were scaled up to make it larger, the newer volume would, would the newer 
rectangular prism would have a length 2, a width 2, and a height 2. In our task today with the info gap, we're supposed to find the length 1, the width 1, and the height 1. And we have to ask questions to be able to figure out what those are. I have the information. I have some of this information. I don't have it all, but I have some of it. And your task was to figure out how to use the pieces that I have. So if I have both of the areas, I could find the, the K value. Or if I had the height two, I could find this if I knew the K value, because we know that the length is proportional to the K. So I need to figure out what the K value is maybe Maybe, maybe I just ask what these are and figure out what those are. So let me show you how the dialogue went with us today. Um, this is problem card two. In problem card one, I said, uh, the person, I said, what specific information do you need? And some people hemmed and hawed because they didn't know what to ask for. But one person said, do I know the H1? And I said, why do you need the information? Well, because that's one of the things I need. And the answer is no, I don't have that. So this is things don't have, I don't have. And we'll make a list over to the side of things that we don't have. We don't have the H1. So the question was, says, what specific information do you need? Can you tell me the length one? Why do you need the information? Well, that's one of the things I need. And I said, actually, I have that information. And it is five centimeters. So I'll put it on the drawing here. I need to know these other two. What specific information do you need? Can you tell me the width one? Why do you need the information? That's what I'm looking for. No, I don't. What specific information do you need? Oops, with one. And can you tell me the width two? Uh, why do you need that information? Well, if I knew the dilation, the scale factor, then I could find it. No, I don't have that information. I'm sorry. Wow. What specific information do you need? Can you tell me the height two? Why, yeah, uh, why do you need that information? Because if I knew the scale factor, then I could find height 1, and that's one of the things I'm looking for. I have that information. The height 2 is equal to 4 centimeters. Hmm. Okay. What specific information do you need? Do you have the volume 1? Why do you need that information? Well, if I knew the volumes, then I could find the scale factor. If I knew the volume and I knew the height, then I could find the width. So you see how you're processing this information. Why do you need it? What are you going to do with it? The volume of this first one was 30 centimeters cubed. And the volume of the second one, when, when asked, was 240 centimeters cubed. And how can I use this information to find the volume of the figure I'm looking for? Well, if I use my formula here, then I could find the scale factor. And that's what we'll do. We'll use this, this formula. It's not here. We'll use this formula. So my formula is volume 2 is equal to the k cubed times the volume 1. 240 is equal to k cubed times 30. Divide both sides by 30. 8 is equal to k cubed. k is 2. Well, that's good. We know that h2 is 4, so we can use our formula. The length 2 is equal to the k value times length 1. Our length 2 is going to be 4. Our scale factor is 2. So our h1 is going to equal to 2. Now the volume is 30. The volume is also equal to the length times the width times the height. So 30 is equal to my length, 5, times the width times the height, which is 2. Or the width is equal to 3. And there we have it. One class tried to do this with the surface area. Surface area is kind of hard. If you did this with surface area, um, knowing that my scale factor is 2 and my length original is 5 and my height of my original is um, of my of my first one is going to be two. If I knew this information, and I knew the surface areas, so the surface area that I started with is going to be um, 
62. And the surface area that we end with is 248. Well, I won't use this information, I guess. I won't use this. I'm not going to use those. I'm only going to use this information. In a rectangular prism, it's got a length, width, and a height. To find the area of the front, this is my length and my width, my height. This is my width. The front is the length times the height. And there's a back, excuse me, length times the height. And there's a back as well. So there's two of these. There's a top and a bottom. That's my length times my width. So there's a top, there's two of these, a length times my width. And then there's a front side here, length, uh, height times width. And there's two of them. Now when we substitute the values, we get 62 is equal to 2 times 5 times the times 2, which is the height, plus 2 times the length, which is 5, times the width, w, plus 2 times the height, which is 2 times the width. Or 62 is equal to 20 plus 10w plus 4w. If I subtract 20 from both sides and combine like terms, I get 42 is equal to 14w, and divide both sides by 14, w is equal to 3. So you come up with the same answer as we did when we knew that the volume was 30. When w is 3, volume is length times width times height. But it's a lot more involved doing it with surface area, just because we had to know you had a top and a bottom and a back and the front and the side. And so it's 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 more more complex this is all that we talked about today and this is enough I th if you understand this part with the with the formulas how um you're using the the idea behind the today's lesson was can you use these formulas practically to work backward or to work forward with them do you understand what they mean do you understand where the k squared k cube comes into play with volumes do you understand how to go from a height here to a height here or from or vice versa and that, that was what the the big idea of us of our lesson today was so good luck and success